So welcome to day 25 of our Lenten series of reflections. This reflection is titled, Let the Word of Christ Dwell in You Richly. And the passage is taken from Colossians 3 verses 1 to 16. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is in your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication and purity, passion, evil desire and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways that you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of its creator, in that renewal there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another and if any has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one holy body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. It's Colossians 3, 1 to 16. So the reflection continues. We are all capable of entertaining desires and of acting in ways that are deeply harmful to others and to ourselves. In Colossians, Paul is clear that forn fornication, impurity, passion, evil desires and greed need to be put to death. Those who disobey will be subject to God's wrath. It is right that everyone hears these hard words uh, and that we do not soften them in any way. It is also right that institutions hear them, particularly churches that have not been honest in facing up to the abuse per perpetrated by their own ministers. Clergy abuse al always involves an imbalance of power and an abuse of trust. These exasperate and damage these exasperate the damage that is already caused when inappropriate sexual relationships are formed within the context of ministry. Churches have been poor at investigating, acknowledging and making reparations for these breaches of boundaries and of trust. Transparency and accountability have not been properly valued and survivors of clergy abuse have been left to recover from their wounds with neither acknowledgement nor support. The Christian life involves forming our lives around the pattern of Christ. There is no place within that reformation for abusive, deceitful or dishonest behaviour. Our old selves need to be stripped of anything that remains of such practices and to put on new clothing. This new clothing, which is to be renewed in knowledge, surely includes integrity, stability and accountability. These need to be worked at and they bring freedom in Christ. For those involved in authorised ministry, the bar is set higher. When we take up ministerial roles, we are put into situations where there are ample opportunities for transgressing sexual, emotional, financial and spiritual boundaries, as well as boundaries of power, of trust and of confidentiality. In addition, there are, privilege, there are privileges and projections that accompany status which are often deeply bound up with people's understanding of and desire for connection with the divine. Our hidden need to be needed 
and our genuine desire to be warm and open, generous in giving and receiving, and present with people in their journeys of faith, must remain within carefully managed boundaries. Church settings can contain a heady mix of intense and sensual worship, personal re revelation and charismatically powerful leadership, which can seem to offer a fleeting impression that God is present in the breaking of boundaries. This is an illusion. The true love that we know in God does not thrive in murky shadows, but is open, faithful and strong. It can stand scrutiny, it will bear the test of time, and it does not prey on the weak. Paul goes on to speak about forgiving those who hurt us. He is largely silent here on how we should seek forgiveness of those we have wounded, whether individually or as part of an institution that has not listened, has not acted and has not changed its ways. 